Well, hello. My name <clears throat> is Emily and Emily Barzini, yes, as I was introduced. And uh, yeah, I guess tonight I will be discussing the project that I pitched to talk about um, is about, I currently work full time as a support worker for a teenager who has cerebral palsy. So although I went to school, I went to Ryerson for photography, uh, Ryerson University in Toronto. Um, I don't really do it as a full-time job because it's a really hard thing to pursue as a full-time job. So I do the support work um, full-time. And then through that, I kind of like created this ongoing series um, about me and this teen boy whose name is Julian because we've become very good friends. So um, I find with my work, I've always really enjoyed connecting with my subject matters. And so I find that my work can kind of just exist with whatever I do in life, um, which is kind of cool. So uh, yeah. Um, let me see if I can pull up the specific series that I'm talking about. Okay. Let's see. Um, well, I guess I have to allow Zoom to, I have to allow, oh, sorry, one second. Okay. Oh, um, in order to, for me to show my screen, I guess I have to stop this meeting because I, like, I have to leave the meeting. So I don't know if I can share my screen necessarily. Um, well, we'll let you back in. <laughs> okay, then I'm going to, okay, I'll do that. Yeah. I guess that makes the most sense. Give me one second. Let me do this. Okay. Oh, the joys of Zoom. I think she's using an Apple machine and she didn't have permissions yeah. set up. Yep. It's a, it's, a, it's a mistake. Most people make their first Zoom meeting with, yeah. if, they're on, if they're on Apple. I called me the other day and did an update apparently and it wouldn't let me in. Yeah. <laughs> Here she is. Hello. Uh, let's see if this works. Okay. Sorry about this. Yes. You can see it now? Yep. Oh, yay. I love technology. Yes. When it works. <laughs> <laughs> this is um, my current project that I'm working on. Um, and yeah, I'm just, I mean, so I, I shoot mostly film, which is when I was in school, I didn't shoot film. And now I do for whatever reason. And of course, it's becoming extremely expensive and hard to get. And, uh, you know, Kodak is ha having hard times um, supplying. But yeah, I, I find like having my camera around and just being able to shoot whenever. Um, so like, for example, this photo, this girl, she has cerebral palsy and uh, she's like 21 years old and lives with her parents and her parents wanted a weekend away. So they called me like respite work. So I went there for the weekend and then I just like photographed her space. Um, 
and they live in a beautiful home. So it was, you know, and, and I feel like um, when I started doing this work with uh, teens and people who had disabilities, I wasn't, I had never worked in that field before. Um, my mom has and my grandmother has so I kind of had a little bit of knowledge but I didn't have um, these are all still pictures of this girl's backyard but yeah I didn't really have a lot of knowledge about it and then uh, I found it was something that you kind of like learn by doing and learn just by like existing with people and learning through what other people are telling you about their experiences and so I feel like when I photograph people it's usually people I am really connected with uh, cause I feel like I want to collaborate with them and tell their story through my work. Um, this is just a photo from Toronto because I don't know if somebody was doing graffiti all around Toronto, but this is her bird, um, this girl. And yeah, so, um, yeah. I just uh, can I suggest you slow down just a little bit. Sorry. <laughs> you probably can tell I don't do these very often. I'm oh I don't even know how to talk about my work anymore, really. Um, just just count to five and then go to the next one. That's <laughs> it's good to learn. Good to learn. Right. Yeah, but um I really love shooting interior spaces and I love the way light looks in certain images. I love clothes hanging. Um, and yeah, this, her backyard, like I said, it's it's very beautiful. And, and I just like, I enjoy the fact that um, I probably would never have met this girl otherwise if it wasn't for my job. But um, through that, I was just, I'm, I'm her and I have a great bond now and she'll email me sometimes. And um, sh like I showed her all these photos and her family, all these photos and they love them and they frame them. So that's kind of like, also what I love about photographing people and their spaces. Um, yeah. Oh, was that the whole thing? Oh. Yeah, so this is the current one. I thought I had more photos in there. Um, do I have to just show photos from what I sent in or can I show any of my photos? Does it you matter? You can talk, show and talk about anything. Okay, <laughs> I will. Um, yeah, so like I said, I went to Ryerson uh, University um, and we had to do a thesis. So my thesis was, uh, one of my favorite projects I've done, but it's about Parkdale in Toronto, um, about how their, you know, the community was changing because of course back, well, back in the day, uh, Parkdale, this community was one of the wealthiest parts of Toronto. And then over time, um, uh, it just changed. There was like uh, the closure of a asylum and people, the displacement of people and so I was very interested in learning about people who had lived in this community for uh to have seen it change from like the 1930s onwards and so I like posted on Facebook somewhere um on a group being like yeah if if anybody wants to talk to me or be documented for this project and this man reached out and we became really good friends and he had lived in Parkdale for 80 years um, I think I'm pretty sure it will say here somewhere but yeah he's lived there he lived there for a really long time and, and he introduced me to a lot of other people that I met and I just I mean it was I was asking them questions about how they felt about the community change in Parkdale and yeah through this I um, built a lot of friendships with people who I otherwise probably would have never met so this lady here was one of the people that I met and she lived in Parkdale uh for since 1948 and so I guess she was 97 years old um and she was a pilot in World War II because she's actually British and she lived in this house with her son who is in this photo here that's her son um yeah so 
and then I photographed this older couple uh, who Ted and Helen and they came here from France um, so I photographed them in their house so I kind of enjoyed the idea of like doc documentary work but also you can tell just from the frazzleness of me that I, I'm kind of one of these people who I, I really am passionate about photography, but I also don't know where my work lives or what exactly I want to do. Um, so, you know, it's always a work in progress. This man was somebody who had lived in Parkdale for a long time. Um, he had lived there since 1988 and he could no longer afford to live in Parkdale because really expensive. Toronto is extremely expensive uh, for really no, no reason. And it's really hard for artists to live. I mean, anybody to live on minimum wage, but artists, it's, I, I don't know how people do it as full-time work. And I don't, I don't know how the rent is in South Carolina, but yeah, it's bad here. Uh, this lady was really cute. She lived in a subsidized housing unit. So I was trying to get like uh, different people's perspectives on just, yeah, what was happening to their, their neighborhoods. So, yeah. Um, and then this is the original man that I met, um, David Thomas. He was the one who introduced me to most people and we're still friends to this day. I still like, we'll go get coffee with him near where he lives, which um, for me, that's the most important part about the work that I do, I feel like is, again, building the, the, the relationships with people um, and meeting people. Even now on like social media, I'll really just like see somebody's work that I like and I'll message them and say, oh, you know, can I come over and, and shoot you in your house or something like that? Um, an example of that would be you know, this is kind of more stuff that I'm shooting now, which is just um, uh, interiors of my friend's space, so. But I'm really struggling now with like, with shooting film that's that's what I'm finding the hardest I found when I was in school I didn't really have a love for photography I found because I had to be producing work all the time for a grade and it felt I don't know and I mean that's how it would be if I was doing it full time for work as well but once I left school I really was revived and found a love for it again when I started shooting film and I just found like a a junkie camera at a at a thrift store but that's what I've been using ever since. I still, I shoot medium format as well, but um, it really brought back my love for photography. So I've been kind of sad about the fact that at least, it, at least in Canada, I don't know how it is in America, but here it's very hard to, to get film right now. And like just, you know, the stuff Kodak Gold and stuff like that, that you used to be able to buy at the convenience store. So I don't know, the times are changing, but. Yeah, this is what I shoot mostly now. It's just like, and I'll get commissions sometimes from people um, on my Instagram asking me to um, take photos of them. I've been shooting weddings. I mean, I never thought I would shoot a wedding. I really didn't. I thought that that was gonna be the, the worst case scenario. No offense to wedding photographers. It was just not something that I thought I wanted to do. Um, but then I photograph my friend's wedding. Let's see if I can, oh no. The internet always fails me, Liam. So slow. But also if anybody has any questions, they can ask me things too, because I don't know if I'll be able to talk about myself for the whole time. <laughs> oh, I, I have a question. When you shot that wedding, did you use film for the wedding too? Yeah, I shot the wedding on film, which was wow. 
yeah it was that's really old school so then did how do you digitize I mean did you scan the negatives or did you get prints made or how did you digitize the wedding pictures then yeah uh there's a place near my house that does it so they'll just uh scan uh scan all the photos and develop them um awesome I, yeah, which is great. I mean, and that's also so expensive now as well. So I'm starting, I bought my own scanner now. So now I'll, yeah. I'll get my photo, my my film developed and then I'll scan it myself. Um, yeah. And when I was in school, I learned how to use the dark room, which I love. I, if I had a dream oh, yeah, me world, too. Yeah, if I had a dream world, I would totally just be in the dark room all the time. <laughs> I think it's great and very like hands-on, which is what I love about photography. Um, yeah. Yeah, so well, I mean, it some the whole color darkroom thing I think is really a little bit problematic. The times I've tried to work in a color darkroom, I got really sick. It just wasn't ventilated enough. Oh yeah, I yeah. I mean, I guess have to be, yeah. I guess if um it, the chemistry is a little more toxic than black and white chemistry. Yeah. But um, most of my friends now, like, I don't know, most of my friends now are shooting film, which I think. That's even awesome. My, yeah, even my partner, he's in, um, he's, he's in film, like he shoots movies and stuff and they all shoot. I didn't even know that they all shot mo most of the, mo some, some movies are shot in on film. I just, yeah, it blows my mind. Cause I'm like, it well, is I've, I've been a film user. I've never defected from film. <laughs> well, that's <laughs> but. Good. I, yeah, but I shoot almost exclusively black and white now. Oh. I, I've shot some transparency film, uh, which I have to have processed by somebody else. And I love transparency film. It, have you tried that? Yeah. Is it like E100? Yeah. It, well, yeah. I think it's e, the process is called E6 or something, but it's what used to be called slide film, but you can yeah. get it in any format, even bigger than the. 35 millimeter format you can get medium format and four by five and and it's amazing I mean the the colors are so they really I used are. to shoot yeah F Fuji made a makes a transparency film that I really like and it's not that it's pretty easy to scan I mean then you've got a positive that you can uh -huh. scan you know but it, it seems to me that people really trust you like my problem here is that if people don't know me, I, I have in, in the States, people I think are much more suspicious than they are in Canada from what I've heard. Like if you tried to just go into a neighborhood and, and say, oh, I'm working on a project about this neighborhood. Do you want to be, would you mind being in my photograph? They would slam the door in your face. I mean, <laughs> yeah, people are really like, if I'm just trying to photograph on the highway, people will roll up in trucks and say, what are you doing here? You know, and, and they get really hostile. Wow. And usually I can diffuse it just by saying, oh, you want to see this cool camera? You want me to take a picture of you? And then they sort of calm down, but it's scary, you know, because there's, well, because there's so many guns and you just kind of worry that somebody thinks you're going to rob them or you're chasing yeah. their, but it sounds like they're either, because of your personality or just more maybe the culture of Toronto being less hostile that you can just you know make friends with people that way and that's really great yeah I think the gun thing for sure and I didn't even know that because um I mean obviously our gun laws are very different but even with like no trespassing signs like I, I would just go past a no trespassing sign oh no. don't do that in South Carolina or I Tennessee know, I know you I know dead real fast <laughs> my, my partner he he's actually uh he lives in in Detroit so he's he's American as well and so he'll just be always so surprised when he comes to Canada and I'm always just like going into uh like people's backyards and stuff because he'll just be yes. like, absolutely not so it is I think it's very different um in that sense and I think also maybe like kind of small town maybe I don't know how small of an area your area is but like in Toronto I guess because it's a big city I feel like sometimes people are just people are just so open to being photographed and shown off 
all the time. Like people come up to me all the time on the street as well. So I feel like, yeah, it, it might also just- It's not like that here. Yeah. I, I used to live in Houston and I photographed on the street there and people thought I was some sort of child pornographer. I mean- Really? Yeah. Can, can I ask so a question? Can, can I jump in here and ask? Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I noticed, Emily, that um, a lot of your work is uh, in portrait mode. Yes. Um, do you have a specific reason for that? M most people, the reason I ask that question is most people don't shoot in por portrait mode ex uh, all, as much as I've seen you shoot here. That's very interesting too, because I, I never even realized I shot like almost exclusively portrait. I just very, I've just never been much of a landscape fan. And I, I think <laughs> I, I usually shoot on a, a 50 millimeter so like I feel like I do get a very specific um yeah frame um and I think that's just worked with me for me so I've done that mm -hmm. for a while but I also do think I'm I would like to branch out because I don't want it to always like I if I saw my my work living in a photo book I would see it living like with images not all portrait like different different sizes but mm -hmm. That's just how I guess most of my work gets shot. I don't know well, why I never was a fan of landscape, but. Yeah, well, the portrait mode forces you to um, really think about your framing because uh, it, it's very tight uh, yeah. on, the, on the horizontal dimension, you know. Yeah, I, I don't know what's going on with my internet though. Um, oh, here we go. Let's see. Um, the, these weddings, yeah, these weddings were all shot on film. This is Are you still there? sense to me. So I will I do sometimes rely on automatic settings on film cameras, but I love that medium format makes you, oh, internet connection unstable. But I, I love that medium format forces you to, to really stop and take your time with what you're shooting. And I know a lot of people don't even go back to shooting 35 once, once they've shot medium format because obviously the image quality is so much better, you can blow it up. But I still love the convenience of 35. I think that that is something I'll always love. But for something like a wedding, I was like, of course, I'm going to shoot something a little better quality. But yeah, this is just so now since then, I shared like that wedding on social media. And then so since then, I just started getting other weddings. Again, all shot on film. Like this, this couple is like 22 years old, a very young couple, but, and I had never met them before. So usually I like to meet couples and the people I just showed you that I shot um, are my very good friends. So usually I like to meet people and, and know them and have that connection, but also you sometimes can't have that. So this was meeting these people for the first time. And um, I'm not gonna lie, I was actually in Chicago uh, the day I was supposed to shoot this wedding and I missed my flight. And so I missed the wedding reception and it was very bad. It was the most unprofessional thing I've ever done. And one of the main reasons why I'm like, I don't think I could ever be a full-time photographer. And so I had to go to this wedding for the after part. Like I missed the ceremony, I mean, like where they were, you know, the actual wedding. So, you know, it was a little embarrassing, but I still did what I had to do. And I charged them nothing like I charged them like 50% off or something for that. But um, yeah, it was embarrassing for sure. But yeah, I think too, just shooting a wedding on film. I mean, people will say this with my work. I, I don't know if I'll necessarily say it, but people will say that there's a certain uh, tenderness in some images that I take. And I think a lot of that comes to like, yeah, just the slowness that comes with shooting something like film. I think you can see that on a lot of, this is another wedding I shot, so. And I mean, there's a lot of money in weddings. I, it's not what I would do full time as a career, but um, yeah, it, it is nice, nice time, so yeah. 
<clears throat> Emily, it's Mike. Uh, are you going to go back and work uh, further with Parkdale? That was all that I had on Parkdale. But do you have any questions about it? Well, are you, you going to continue with that? Oh, like going further after this. Yeah. Um, I didn't really actually continue it after that point. Um, but I think that it, it's hard now because I kind of want to leave the city. So I find myself very disillusioned with it and very much like not wanting to do much here. Um, but that that was something that I always had wanted to go further on because it would be interesting even to see where these people are. I, I would be a little scared to see where these people are post pandemic. Um, but yeah, I, I, it's not finished. It's not a finished body of work. Yeah. Yeah, I would say. Yeah, well, it's very that. strong work and I think you need to pursue it. Thank you very much. Yeah, I, I was, that was the one of those um, bodies of work that I was very much like, this is something I would love to do. And then my other part of my thesis was this body of work here, which, um, when I was in, yeah, so maybe three years ago, um, my grandmother, she passed away and it was a family. My, my dad's side of my family is Italian. So it's eight. He was one of eight kids. And, uh, when my nonna passed away, it was kind of like th this loss of the matriarch in the family. And so I decided to photograph my dad and all my, all of his siblings who I wasn't really close with. And I wasn't really close with my grandmother. She immigrated here. She never learned how to speak English. So we never really had a, a relationship. So I, I, I picked this body of work to do to kind of piece together my dad's side of the family and the relationship with them. So I like went in and photographed my nonna's home um, because she was actually able, and she lived to be 99 years old, which is also the funny thing. So, and my dad was the youngest of eight kids. So I just found it really interesting. I love family dynamics. Um, and you can see probably a consistency with, I really like to shoot again, interior spaces. I think that they can tell a lot. Like you could just look at this and probably know that an old Italian lady mm -hmm. lives here and makes pasta downstairs or did. Um, and I love like combining that with uh, portraits of, um, people like it after she passed away uh, she still had they still had all and still now to this day she all her baby like she had baby powders it's still there her shoes were are still there so I mean I think that that's really interesting and so this is one of my uncles um, and so I just photographed all of them and again I have some of these people I haven't even really built a relationship with. So the, sh the project itself was very interesting. Um, this is my uncle John, who is the oldest of all the siblings. And they were all born like my grandfather was in the war. So um, like some of them were born, he was born before the war and then my dad was born in the sixties. So. Uh, how, how did you decide whether to shoot color or black and white in, in this case? I think I think I was really also just because this was school, I was so stressed about it not being cohesive. Um, oh, I, I was really worried about uh, and I know that is a bit of a cop out. And I know you said that you like to shoot black and white. So I know that that's probably like an intentional thing to do. And I, I like the idea of black and white now being very intentional and being um, yeah, a, a chosen thing for this. It was mostly just for the cohesiveness of it being a project. And I wanted to, again, there's the idea of like, yeah, wanting to focus on somebody's face and not be distracted if there's a lot of things going on. Um, I, I love black and white, especially for kind of documentary work. Um, I, yeah. It seems like you're also really good at, um, you know, one problem I think when you're photographing a family is people want to turn to the camera and smile. And it's, I mean, maybe you can take a few like that, but it's hard to get people 
like this and sort of not grinning at the camera sometimes mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. not as posed yeah I I usually like do like to be very clear I'm like don't don't smile at the camera because I, I mean I think unless it's a natural smile and we're in the moment laughing and I think it is so hard to take natural photos when people know they're being photographed because yeah there's already that sort of awareness um but I think that uh I, yeah I think especially because yeah they were my my family I mean again I'm not super close with them and I think with that, my, that's wonderful this photo yeah I love that oh thank you yeah this is my my one aunt yeah and my dad's my dad's family is they're very they're very interesting a lot of them are very cold like my mom's side of the family is Polish and they're very like warm I mean not saying based off of but uh they're there she's very warm and my whole family there is but on my dad's side there there was just not ever really that I could call them and they would be there kind of thing but this really this bind, binded us all like they all wanted a copy of this book and so I made everybody a copy of this book and so wow. it was really special especially especially for my dad because since then he's just always asked me to take photos of the family and um, I really love it for that wow yeah. Do, do you think you could point to maybe five photos or something like that that are your favorite or the ones that you feel strongest about? Oh, um, let's see. Um, I would have to say it would have to be like my travel photos. I, I would have to say like uh, when I was in Italy. I love these photos that I don't know if I could pick just five, unfortunately. I don't think I could. Um, well, all right, go for 10. I'm just, I just want to know, <laughs> I just want to know what you, how, how you feel strongly about what you're doing. Yeah, I feel like um, also, cause I don't know on, on, on this website, I don't have, it's not fully updated. So I don't have a lot of the stuff I've most recently took. I'm currently working on a project with my Polish grandmother and uh she is now in a nursing home and she's um she's just been she's just been put in this nursing home and she has dementia so it's a very confusing time for her but I've been photographing her for the past 10 years in her home so that's something that I've been working on for a, a long period of time that's now cha uh, changed dynamics as she's moved into a nursing home so I would say that's a body of work I'm really passionate about but um, it's not on this website, unfortunately. So, uh, um, I, I can try and find it, but, um, these photos of Italy are, are photos that I'm very passionate about this whole, um, trip to Italy. I went right after I did that project on, um, my family, my Italian family, because my nonna has a home there. Um, and it's just so beautiful. Like it's such a beautiful place. Uh, what, what, uh, what what uh, what uh, towns uh, did you visit when you were in Italy? Uh, I was in Rome um, uh -huh. uh, for a week, and so we did all the Colosseum, that sort of stuff. And then my nonna lives up north in a town called Pagentro, which is, I think, it has maybe six hundred people living there, and it's um, the the population is all older people. There's like a very little young young population, so. Uh, it would be a this is Pagentro so it's, it's so beautiful um, but nobody really know like the closest thing yeah it's maybe two hours outside of Rome but she has a house there um, so I stayed there for a week in my nonna's house which was uh, and this is like the view it's it's a beautiful place actually Madonna's grandmother grew up there so I might be loosely related to Madonna who knows <laughs> But I just, um, yeah, I really love, I love Italy a lot, uh, not just because I'm Italian. I just think that traveling, you really just get to see so much. Um, and if, if I could, I would be going to a lot of different places, um, for sure.
I'm going to see if I can, let me just see if I can pull up this, these photos of my grandmother. I'll do it on my Instagram here. Um, so these are photos of my grandmother. Um, wow. Yeah, so this is her now. She's in a nursing home. So I've been going there whenever I can to photograph her. Um, I'm just trying to think. This is the last photos I took of her in her home. Um, and her and I have a very special relationship. She's my best friend. And I lived with her for a year. Uh, she lives in Scarborough. So just outside of where I live in Toronto. Uh, and now the house is empty now that she's in this nursing home. And so I'm actually thinking of potentially moving in there. And uh, I've been taking things from that I that are hers in her house and, you know, repurposing them in my house. So I feel like this is a strong, this body of work about my grandmother is a strong body of work that I, I could see myself pursuing as a, um, like something that I would maybe want to put in a gallery or a show or something. So, yeah. My Instagram also, it's, it's, it's hard because I find I do post a lot of just my personal stuff, even here. That's why I was kind of like hesitant to show. Cause I was like, and eh, it's a little, um, you know, but that's my, uh, something I struggle with that my my mom also is always on me about is is how do you get away from like you know personal versus and and trying to like create a brand is very hard but these are some photos I took of somebody's like art studio in Toronto so this is just really something that I do now where I'll just see somebody's work that I like I'll message them if they are comfortable with it which I find the way again the way I present myself online um, I think I'm a very open book so I think that, I mean, I've talked quite a little bit, so obviously I'm, I must be good at talking, I guess. Um, and so I kind of make people comfortable sometimes, which I think again is the reason why I've always wanted to do photography. So I think those two kind of came together and they can, I think you can still not love being around people and be a photographer. I think that you can do that as well. But for me, it was just always that love of connecting with people. Um, and then the photography just was the visualization of that. So um, I, 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 I'm grateful for the internet because it's allowed me to uh, you know, travel to different places, meet different people, photograph different situations. And even, you know, um, even something like this that I've gotten here now, I guess um, I, I, Tatum found me on Instagram, I guess so. You know, oh, and this is, I'll just show this last one of my grandmother. So, yeah, these were shot on medium format. So, but most of what I showed you was shot just on uh, 35. But I'm starting to shoot more Fuji film though, which because of the Kodak shortage. And I really, I love it. I love the colors of it, which I never thought, oh, this is Ektar, but. I never thought I would really like the colors, but yeah. So that's some of my work. There's a lot of environmental stuff. These were taken in Detroit. Detroit is somewhere that I think I would wanna move to. Um, so it's a city that I'm really interested in. And I'm really interested in a lot of these like American cities that are kind of, they have a lot of potential, but are a little bit desolate and maybe underlooked. I mean, I, you all are much more equipped to speak on American issues than I am, but I, I, I just, I'm so interested in, in rebuilding and stuff. Um, Emily, how, how recent are these Detroit photos? August. This year? Yeah. Or last year rather. Yeah. So there's six months. Yeah. I, I agree with you about that. I think there, there's a ruins like that are, are fascinating to photograph. And 
we've got a lot of them just sort of yeah. ruined landscapes uh, Emily, in cities. You, I'm sorry. N cities and rural areas. There's just a lot of desolate places in America. Did you um, have any um, trouble getting in access to these places? Um, I feel like in Detroit specifically, I mean, uh, definitely street smart wise, I feel like. And in America, I feel like I would have to be like I, when I go to New York, I photograph places in New York and I find myself, obviously, it, it feels quite similar to Toronto, but uh, for like here, I was with my, my boyfriend, so I felt, you know, I was, and he's from that area, so I feel very like comfortable with him and, you know, not um, super stressed, but, you know. Yeah, because of uh, being, uh, you know, single woman yes. in an area like this could be um, not the best um, yeah, and but uh, but the physical access to the places where they they um, where they were they chained uh, you know fences around them or were, were they just open? Mm -hmm. Oh, these were just open. This okay, was just open space. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I wonder if I even have some from. I recently went to San Francisco, which was like this might be one of my favorite photos I've ever taken. Um, yeah. Uh, I actually think I'm going to make it into a, a print for some people. And they just have in Chinatown in San Francisco, they just have clothes hanging everywhere. I just love, love that. Um, and it's so hilly there. I couldn't believe. Um, I don't know how people ride bikes in San Francisco, but it was just so beautiful. I went to Twin Peaks. Um, yeah, I just love documenting the surroundings as well. Um, yeah. And the camera that I shoot with, I wonder if I can just show, let me just grab it here. Uh, right now is, it's just like a Canon automatic uh, film camera that uh you know is kind of like the canon rebel ones um and it's so damaged it's all taped up and <laughs> the lens cap here came off but it's great it's one of the best cameras i've ever got and you know it just takes right these cr batteries the c1 cr123 but when people find out that i shoot this they're always just shocked but it's great i, I love this camera um and it's very portable. So I'm able to take it when I'm traveling and, and such, cause I just feel like medium format cameras are big. And in school I was shooting large format too, which there's no way. Um, one thing I, I, I've noticed about your photos other than most of them are portrait. <laughs> which uh, is a good observation. <laughs> um, but your color palette and tone tonalities are very consistent. Um, do you have, uh, is that, that just the way it turns out with the film you're using or do you do something to uh, ensure that consistency? Yeah, when I, when I edit my photos, I just go through Lightroom and I just maybe will turn down the highlights and, uh, and reduce the shadows. But besides that, that's, the colors is pretty matched to what I'm seeing, which, okay. yeah. I've never really been one to do much Photoshop or anything, but I do appreciate it. Again, I'm just, I'm not a technical uh, person, which I'm trying to be more technical with scanning and learning more uh, dark room stuff, um, but you can always get, learn more, I guess. But yeah, are there any other questions? Yeah. Well, I, I, I'll just tell you that I, I uh, thoroughly enjoy your your photographs. Um, Thank you. you have a very uh, consistent eye, and um, your uh, framing and um, you know your your choice of subject matter um, are 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 outstanding. I, I think these are some of the finest photos I've seen in in a long time. Wow, that I am so flattered. I appreciate that so much. Um, I, I know, I, I feel like my biggest obstacle in, in my way with my work is myself. And I think that I need to put myself 
out there in the sense of just applying to more things and trying to just uh, pursue it harder. I think that uh, my self-doubt often creeps in because I, I feel very powerful about my work. But sometimes I, I get in that place where I'm like, there's there's a lot of people, but I think it's just more so about the heart that you put into it, which I definitely put all my heart into it. So I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Well, you're welcome. Um, are there any other questions, comments, or concerns? Okay, then. <clears throat> if not, we'll call it a night and wrap it up so Emily can get on with her evening. Um, I appreciate it very much. Everybody who listened to me ramble on, I appreciate it very much. No, no, you, your, your presentation was very refreshing. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. I appreciate it because this is good to practice too. I was so stressed psyching myself out for like an hour trying to write notes down. So, you know, now I'm more prepared for the future and I appreciate all the engagement and conversations because um and for you all to take time out of your day to listen i've got one 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 more comment just uh, uh, about presentation yes. um you you you're, you should you should uh, go full screen so we don't see all your desktop like you this what? yes yeah like oh, that that makes so much more sense yeah yeah so so now we can concentrate and uh the images are, are slightly larger, that type of thing. So it makes yeah. Sense. yeah. Ah, now I know. I definitely have not used Zoom enough in my time. Yeah, well, it's just your desktop that you, that's all you have to do. You ah. know? So. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank <laughs> you very much, Emily. Thank you. And we will keep in touch. Um, next month on March 17th again, we have Gary Bieber joining us. Many of us are familiar with Gary, and it should be a good evening. So thanks, everyone, for coming tonight, and we'll catch you next month. All right. Thank Bye -bye. you, Emily.